Hi everyone, it's Pete here from the Paint Toolkit, and yes, we're back again with the one minute uh, interview um, where someone, a person with pain or a healthcare professional, tells us about the importance of pain self management. Now, this is quite awesome for me because I've actually never interviewed anybody from China. And so this is going to be, well, I'm buzzing. And um, lovely, um, she is lovely actually. I'm gonna, uh, we're with the lovely Lis, Lisanthia Taylor, who's a physiotherapist. And she's an Australian by birth, and as she tells me, an Aussie, born and bred. But she's uh, working in Shanghai in China. So it's a good afternoon for me, but it's a good evening from you. So Lisanthia, tell us all about yourself. Hey, what an introduction. What, I, I don't know what more I can add. Um, I, I've been in China for four years and uh, it brought me back to clinical practice. Um, I'd spent some time in Silicon, Va sorry, Silicon Valley, uh, which kind of qualifies me to wear a few hats. Okay. So what I love is I can wear those hats across media and marketing, across um, you know, a bit of technology, and also bring my clinical expertise to getting a bit better information to people that can benefit from, you know, the backstory of how they can self-manage pain. Now, there's a little bit more to you than meets the eye because you're just not the physio, the, uh, physiotherapist because you've been involved with some exciting projects. Number one is the Pain Revolution and the brand new Pain Chat. So can you tell the viewers a little bit about like a, a whirlwind visit to the pain revolution, which I'm a massive fan of. And Absolutely. I've all right, all right. So world. pain revolution, look, is me, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants there. We've got you know, Laura Mosley, David Butler, an incredible team that come together to, you know, over the last three years, we've made something from nothing uh, in terms of setting up an, ed an educational program that benefits an extraordinary number of people in Australia. So we've got a local pain educator network that we're starting to have these sort of nodes of, uh, of educated, upskilled health professionals that actually give people information in their community. And we go and do a big bike ride every year and tell people about it. So I'm just, I'm the shouty uh, media PR person for that project, uh, which means I have to manage all our social media. And what I found with that social media was I didn't have the content I wanted to share with patients. I wanted to be able to give them, you know, some, some information that is relevant, useful, based on the things that people in pain actually look for online and made me think, well, I better do this as a separate project because otherwise it all got too messy um, in pain revolution. So that's how I made pain chats. I love it. I love both of them. I love both the concepts. I was, I'll tell you what, you know, you talked about the bike rides. I was lucky enough last year, as you know, um, I was at the Australian New Zealand uh, Pain Congress in Sydney. And uh, I was at the launch of the, the first bike ride. And uh, man, I saw you there. It was buzzing, man. I loved it. It was. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, don't they don't look good in their, in their polka dot lycra? Well, man, I'm not a lycra man myself. Like, I'm not sorry, it's what I do like. <laughs> Because this, so I've got to keep my biker image, you know. So, uh, but that no, there was awesome, and uh, the actual concept of how you're starting up these learning centres, these educational centres, where uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there'll be like learning centres for not only uh, healthcare professionals but also for people with pain, etc. Dur yeah, during the ride. So this year we're heading to Tasmania. So we're taking over Tassie this year. So the riders are going to cover about 700 kilometres. Um, over a week, uh, you know, at last count, we've got maybe 12 or 13 different um, educational events that are going to happen. And we're going to particularly working with health professionals and then with the general public in their home environment. So then in their, in their local area uh, to create some engaging experiences that make people think, I wonder if pain could be different. It is different. I mean, it's, well, the thing is, it's got to, we've got to look at things in a different way because, you know, I keep, I, you know, the other week I was saying to myself, God, all these, we've got all these fantastic healthcare professionals out there doing their stuff and whatnot. 
but the, the numbers of people with pain keeps going up. Isn't it? Isn't it frightening? I may, I wonder about that too, and that's why for me that's why I'm interested in internet search. You know, and that's what pain chats is is so important about getting information to people in the way that they search for it. Because if we can get that information to people in their normal life, in their real life, when they're searching on Google at 3 a.m. because they're worried, if we can get some information that doesn't scare them, I hope they get up the next morning thinking, I want some more. Give me something that I can build on with that. And I can probably self-manage. You know what? Um, when I started the, um, when we uh, rebranded the site uh, last, late last year, I've got a new feature in there for, called uh, live chat. Mm. So uh, it's on quite a few sites now. Uh, Scott does the website for me. He's done it on a few other sites. And I wasn't sure how the hell this is going to work, really. And I thought, is this going to be useful? And um, the very first person, when it went live, the very first person to contact me on live chat was um, a young lady who I said, how can I help you? And she said, well, everybody's gone home. So she, where she was trying to look for information from the, the organisations, uh, they shut down for the evening. And she found me, and so we just chatted for like 10, 15 minutes. She just wanted to talk. It wasn't a verbal chat. It was just, you know, I'd be a bit nimble on the, on, the, uh, on the keyboard and whatnot. But she just wanted a bit of reassurance that her, her pain and discomfort wasn't going to be with her for a long period of time. But just for, she just wanted a little bit of reassurance, really. And I thought to myself, this is probably the one of the best things I've done, actually, by having live chat on the website. And like we were saying earlier, that's I think the most important thing we all that all of us do you is to that. inspire yeah. that bit of of confidence and safety. Listen, I'm aware that it's your evening now, and God, the sun's out. It's bloody freezing here, by the way. Is it, what's, the temperature, what's the temperature like over there at the moment? Is it cold? It's not as cold as it should be. Okay. Fair so enough. we uh, we we're having a pretty warm winter. Okay. Fair enough. Listen, let's, get, let's do, the, um, let's do the, the interview and uh, then well, I'll, I'll stop the recording, but I just need to have a little chat with you about something else before we go, a little possible project for the future. Ah, how exciting. Yeah, so um, so let's go to the, uh, the, the one. Listen, I know it's a one minute video, but if you want to go on for two or three minutes, four minutes or whatever, that's okay. So for you and the take up, what is the take home message for people who live with pain what's the what's the most important part why they need to self-manage go so I mean, so I'm, I'm a clinician i've spent all of today working with patients you know to giving them information so the reason the reason i give them all that information is so they can make decisions independent of me they can have some knowledge some confidence some ability to to problem solve because I'm not always going to be there. But what I can do is give them some experiences in the clinic where they can question and, and be curious about the way they, that, that pain has affected them up until now. And they, you know, I always say to people, go experiment. You know, here's, here's where you're safe. Go test it. Go see what happens. Um, and, and my role then is to support them, you know, sometimes when they, when they overstep the mark. Yeah. So the most important thing I think is find find some confidence, find some safety, find a support crew. And it doesn't have to be health professionals. Get some good information. And if, if you can do those things, the science supports your ability to feel a whole lot better. You know what? You've just mentioned quite a few tools in the toolkit. <laughs> that's what it's all about. I, I recommend the toolkit. I think that's a fan, fantastic uh, resource that is so available for people. So all the, it's just it's just about just keeping it simple and getting people back in the driving seat and you know better teamwork. You know you can't. I think to try and manage pain on your own is pretty much mission impossible. Really, I think you need a you need a little bit of coaching, as you do when you're learning to drive. You know you have someone sitting beside you to support you and show you along the way. Well, this is how we do things. And oh no, we didn't do that quite right. Well, let's do that again. You know, so it's just simple things like that where you're that coach that is. You know, I don't like saying instructor, but that coach supporting that person in their journey. 
Absolutely. And, and Pete, I think there's many, many people out in the world that thank you for the role that you play that for them in their self-management journey. Listen, I think it's not just me. I, it, we're a team, you know. It's the, I, I like to think I've got a worldwide family, you know, with you guys, well, you in China and the, all the guys in Australia, New Zealand, uh, Canada, uh, France, you know, all, it's all, you know, we're all working as a team. People who are promoting a self-management message, it ain't just done one person. We've got to, we're all working as a team, trying to get the message out there that, sure, you've got pain, but it can be. Listen, if oh, sort of people, if I can do it, you can do it. You know, I'm not an academic guy. I'm just a bloke. I used to be a painter, decorator, and a driving instructor, and that's about it. I was brought up in a street market. I've got, you know, more qualifications of, I can paint and I can teach, teach driving and teach people. By the way, I don't do driving instructors anymore, but so that's any qualifications other than that. I'm just a, just a simple dude, really. Hey, listen, it's been great talking to you. Don't go anywhere. I'm just going to hit the stop, hit the uh, stop the record button. But thanks ever so much for taking time out of your day to spread the word about pain self management to others. I really do appreciate that. Thanks for having me, Pete. It's been a pleasure. Take care. Stay there. Ciao. Bye.